Yeah, so this is the one of the new things that we are introducing into Qt. So um, the Qt 3D Studio is actually launched and, and kind of uh, being available today. So this is a really new thing. But let's look briefly, what's Qt 3D Studio? What are the key features? What's the development status at the moment? Even though that we have been releasing it to the public, it's not entirely ready yet, but let's lo look where we are at the moment, and then let's see how to get it. Where to find it? So, this is actually something that uh, was contributed by NVIDIA. So, in Qt, we have had uh, Q3D rendering engine for some time already, um, but we haven't been we haven't had any design tool for creating the user interfaces. So when NVIDIA approached us that uh, they could uh, contribute this NVIDIA drive design tool that they have been developing, especially for the automotive segment, we were happy uh, that this would solve the, uh, solve the tooling issue on the 3D UI creation side. Um, and of course, our goal is to integrate this fully to the to the Qt toolset. And uh, what the Qt 3D Studio consists is that there's the studio, which is the editor part of things. So this is the tool that you use to create the uh, 3D user interface. Then there's a viewer component that is ba basically a player application that you can use to see, um, see the UI in action both in desktop, where you are developing the UI, but you can also install the viewer application into your target device. And actually, there's also a remote deployment uh, possibility so that you can see immediately how the user interface looks in the target device. Then there's the QML API. That is the way that you integrate the uh, 3D Studio user interface into your application. Um, and then there's also C++ API that you can use to integrate this to your app. And of course, underneath, there's the runtime component, which is a uh, 3D engine, basically. And of course, what are the benefits? Uh, of course, the, what you see is what you get. You can immediately see that if some change in the user interface is actually causing performance issues in the target hardware that you are uh, targeting or using, so that you don't have to have a big turnaround time for your user interface development, so that it doesn't take weeks or days or months, whatever, to see the user interface in action in the target device. You can see it immediately. And of course, the Qt integration, we are integrating this as the inter integral part of Qt. We are providing the APIs, and of course, the whole uh, being part of Qt brings a lot of building blocks to create the whole application, uh, the whole uh, device integration to the UI. So it's not only as a, as a UI design tool, but combined with Qt, it's, it's much more. And of course, you can target to desktop, embedded, and mobile. Open architecture. So, uh, Q3D Studio has a plugin based system. So, you can create, for example, different kind of effects, new materials. You can even do the rendering a bit different way. So, there's also a plugin interface in the rendering side. And of course, all source code is available starting from last Friday. So, how does the tool look like? Um, in the top left corner, we have the slides, which is basically a concept for UI states. Pretty similar concept as you have in PowerPoint. So basically you have, for example, master slide that you can use for embedding stuff that is visible in all parts of the UI. Uh, then there are different other slides uh, that can have different content. Or, for example, you can set that the, 
uh, visibility of certain part of the UI is different in, in those different states. And all of those uh, slides have their own timeline, which is shown at the bottom, so the timeline editor. So that, for example, you can place a 3D object in a certain state of the UI, and then you can animate that, uh, for example, the location of the object. And then there's a concept of layers. So the UI can be built on uh, to different layers, and, and you can set the blending mode of the different players differently in, in different um, in different slides and, and layers. So basically, the kind of the way that you construct the user interface is, is using the slides, layers, and, and then timeline. Then on the right hand side, you have the project's assets. So basically that contains everything, 3D assets, 3D models that you have, uh, different textures that you are using in 3D objects. Uh, if you are applying some post-processing effects, those are visible also in, in the, in the right-hand side. So that's the, basically the content of the project that you have. Then there's the properties and actions. So basically properties are, for example, location of the object, x-coordinates of an object, or opacity of the object, or, or color of a material that you are using on top of the object. So the 3D assets, uh, of course, this is not the design tool. So you are using a 3D design tool to create the uh, 3D objects. And then using FBX or Collada uh, exchange formats, you import the 3D objects into the Q3D Studio. Um, all the objects, hierarchies are imported, materials, are imported so that those are converted into Q3D Studio materials, but for example, colors uh, are imported correctly. Then cameras and lights are in, imported only as, as empty nodes to the project. So basically, you have to define the cameras and lights uh, in the Q3D Studio. Animations. You can create the animations also in the design tool and bake them inside the exported. But then you lose the freedom to modify the uh, animations inside the Q3D Studio. So basically, you have to decide where are you doing the animation, whether it's the design tool or the Q3D Studio. And, and basically, the recommendation is to do those in the Q3D Studio. Um, but yeah, animations are basic keyframe animations. So you can, for example, in this picture, you, have, have, you are animating the position of the object and the rotation of the object, starting from this time and ending from this time, and using this kind of easing curve. Then post-processing effects. Of course, these are the ones that make the kind of the user interface really pop. Uh, you can have different kind of lens effects, for example, depth of field effect. For example, if you want to highlight some parts of the user interface, have something focused, and the rest of the uh, rest of the UI are unfocused. So it can be working out also as the kind of the guiding the user attention. Then you can have different kind of coloring effects, uh, blur effects. Uh, and creating different styles. And, and these are the built-in post-processing effects. Uh, we are extending these all the time, and it's actually quite easy to extend these if, if you are not finding the, the effect that you, are, you need. Again, here's the plugin architecture. Then, integrating with Qt Quick. So there's a two-way integration. So basically, in the QML side, for example, you just introduce the Qt3D Studio element into your project and define the project file that you have in the Qt3D Studio. 
and that will be then showed on as part of the uh, Qt Quick application. Uh, and of course, you can drive the state from the QML application, for example, telling that go to a certain state, meaning certain slide in the 3D user interface. Or you can even set, uh, set the application go to a certain time in the, in the animation timeline. You can change the properties of the objects. For example, if you want to change the color of the material, you can change also that from the, from the Qt Quick API. Then there's also the possibility of rendering uh, Qt Quick user interfaces on top of 3D objects. So for example, in, in this picture uh, on the right side, you can see that the calendar component has been implemented with Qt Quick, you, uh, designed with using the Qt Quick designer, and then added dynamic content and uh, rendered on top of the instrument cl cluster, which is uh, designed in the Q3D studio. And of course, you can mix and, ma mix and match these technologies of integration. Then, device deployment. As I said, there's a remote deployment to the viewer. So if you have the viewer running in the target device, and it's in the same network as the studio, then you can basically just set the IP address, uh, connect from, from the studio to the player, and all the time when you are making changes to the studio project, those will be copied into the device, and you can see immediately the changes also in the target device. And of course, when you create the Qt, Qt application where you are using the Qt 3D Studio UI, then you do the normal deployment from the Qt creator uh, to the device. For example, if you are using boot to Qt stack or Android or, or whatever is the, is the target device operating system. Then development status. What we have been up to. After the NVIDIA contribution, uh, we have actually ported the whole UI from MFC to Qt. So the original implementation was Windows only and implemented with MFC. So that was quite a big work. A bit still ongoing. So minor tweaking needed there still. Uh, we have also slightly updated the uh, look and feel, changing icons, colors, and stuff like that. And then uh, we have been extending the QML API, which we inherited from NVIDIA, and also created the C++ API. And one big effort has been uh, streamlining the code base, in the sense that there was a lot of third-party components used, uh, which actually are duplicate if you think about the, all the features and functionality that the Qt provides. So we have been replacing many of the third-party components with Qt equivalent. And of course, all the, all the necessary stuff uh, needed to make this application as part of Qt, so having the build system based on Qt and, and also the CI integration. All the code reviews are in place, so everything is going through the code review into the code base of Q3D Studio as well. And the last, last item is that we have been benchmarking the NVIDIA runtime, the 3D engine, against Q3D, so that exploring the possibility of changing the rendering engine uh, from NVIDIA engine to Q3D. The porting effort, uh, that was something that we really needed to do before releasing the source code, because of course being an MFC based, it wasn't cross-platform as everything else in Qt, and of course it was kind of hindering the further development of the application. So uh, we have identified uh, some usability-related stuff, 
that we want to change in the user interface. And of course, in general, start improving and increasing the functionality in the user interface. And of course, it's easier to maintain as, as is Qt-based. Qt and the first release that we are releasing, that's fully on Qt. Then the rendering engine. Uh, we were doing a proof of concept implementation. Uh, so that taking the project files that the Q3D Studio is producing, passing those, and doing the rendering with the Q3D. And the proof of concept was successful. So we are able to do that. <coughs> Unfortunately, as we had the great opportunity of benchmarking to these two engines, we found out that the Q3D wasn't as performant as the NVIDIA engine in some of the use cases. But there's a lot of optimizations already done into the Q3D. And those are actually already part of the 5.9 uh, source code for Q3D. So there's also a big benefit for, for those that are using Q3D, because the optimizations, of course, are generic. Um, but yeah, so the target is that for the 2.0 release happening in, in May, we would be releasing this uh, on top of Q3D. And as the recap of the timeline, so we are now here. Code is in the public repos. That happened on, on Friday. And then the first release at the end of November and the 2.0 release in the May 2018. And of course, the biggest thing to note about the changing the rendering engine, of course, we are making that so that it's not visible for the, for the users, in a sense that if you start developing an application on top of 1.0, the same application will be looking the same also in the 2.0. So this is something that is happening under the hood. So this change shouldn't be anyhow visible for, for the application developers using the 1.0. So where do you get it? Binary snapshots should be available through the Qt online installer as we speak. So they have been released this morning. Source code is in the code review as all other components as well. Look for the Q3D Studio. And the 2.0 uh, proof of concept engine is also already in, in the code review. So you can actually test all the time also using the new, new Studio runtime. But of course, there's a bunch of features and functionality missing from, from that runtime still. But if you want to know the details, there was a, a note about the presentation from Laszlo this afternoon. So Laszlo will be going through the details, how it was done, and also the current status, and maybe also showing some cool demos. Uh, yeah, and of course, documentation snapshot is, is also available. But of course, remember, these are development snapshots. They have some rough edges. These are not the final, uh, final releases. Uh, there's also, uh, in the bug reports, there's a project for Q3D Studio. So uh, please report bugs if you have time to test this. And of course, we are open to contributions as well. So if you find, find something that you want to add or fix, please do so. So everything is under code review, and everything is available. But I think we have a couple of minutes still, so we could uh, take a bit deeper look on the user interface that I'm, it's actually working and functional. So just not showing slides. So these are the, for example, states in this user interface so that we have the 2D mode and a 3D mode. 
and then we have the state that is doing the transition between the modes. And you can see that immediately how it looks like. You can change dynamically. For example, if you want to change some of the, uh, some of the animations to be quicker, uh, for example, so that just dragging, dragging the keyframes, and when you now play, play the applications, you see that there was a slight change in the position, animation, and of course, same for the rotation. Of course, all the basic things, you can modify the rotation, how, how it looks like, and of course, defining lights, adding lights to the scene, uh, removing lights, moving lights dynamically uh, through the animations. Um, and then this is the project router that you have all the content that you have included in, into the, to the project. And of course, you can mix and match this with the, with the quick-based implementation. So basically, if we look at that, that example, here's the integration to the, the Qt application. So you have the Studio 3D element, which is taking the presentation file from the resources of the, of the application that has been included. And then you can reference to different parts of the 3D UI from the QML application side. And of course, you can mix and match 2D and 3D. So if you run the application, you can see that there's actually a lot of more uh, happening on, on the real application. Uh, so that, for example, these menus on top, uh, menus in the, in the center part of the UI, uh, have been implemented with Qt Quick. And then you have the telltales underneath. Those have been implemented with the safe renderer component that we have also introduced. Uh, and then all, all the content and values are driven from the Qt application side. Yeah, but I think that kind of sums up. Uh, I think we have a couple of minutes for questions. So if you have some questions related to this. Any questions? Yep. Just throw that over. So. <laughs> Can bone animations be used with Qt 3D Studio? Um, both animations of what? Sorry, uh, bone animations like in character movement or something. Uh, character movement. Um, yeah. So basically, there's a keyframe animations for. Uh, are you meaning skeletal animations type oh, yeah. of things? That's ah, what okay. I meant. No, Thank no. You. There's yeah. No, morphing animations, skeletal animations, for example, are missing. Nice. And, Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Another question. Um, so currently you told us um, there are two, um, as an NVIDIA specific rendering engine and also there's obviously the Qt3 module. So in future you will build or, or abandon the NVIDIA engine and still lately build on Qt3D? Uh, sorry, the sound quality is quite bad. So, so uh, can you repeat, please? Um, you've told us there are two rendering mm, engines. Yeah. Um, or there will be uh, one based on Qt3D. Mm. Yeah. This means in the future we, you will base Soleil on Qt3D as yeah. rendering engine? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So the better integration with the Qt3D makes it possible to have different kind of use cases, and it will be all rendered with Qt3D. So that's one of the reasons that we are focusing for, for changing, the, changing the rendering engine to Qt3D. So unfortunately, we're running out of time. Thank you very much, Sami.